greetings from Ignu Regional Center, Kochi. We are very, very glad to all have you all here. And in this session of enrichment, which is the grievance redressal cell, we have a special speaker, Madam Poonam Bhushan, who will be speaking on gender equality unfinished task. Madam has obtained the master's degree and MC from Punjab University, Chandigarh, and has been teaching in IGNU since March 1987. Madam has also been selected by the East West Center, Hawaii, for participation in the international workshop on higher education in 2020 in 20, and organized at USA. She is also a recipient of the DST Fellowship for MPhil on India Science Policy Beyond the Oceans, Antarctica. Madam has also awarded the Silver Medal in post-graduation at Punjab University. Her areas of interest are policy, analysis, and political economy of education. Madam will be speaking on the topic, Gender Equality Unfinished Task. Before Madam proceeds, I request Dr. Prasita Krishnan to share about the Innovation Club activity at IGNU Regional Center, Kuchin. Friends, you also should be aware that this program will also help you to get accustomed to certain soft skills of how to present. So you will learn from the uh, presenter. And we also want to share that most of the IGNU subjects, that is the courses, are available in the Swayam portal. Over to Dr. Prasita Unnikrishnan, who will share about the Innovation Club activity of RC Kuchi. Thank you, Dorothy, Dorothy Madam. Uh, respected Regional Director, Dr. Jay Jyoti Madam, uh, distinguished speaker for today's session, Ms. Poonam Bhushan, Associate Professor, uh, School of uh, Education, Igno Headquarter, Delhi. Uh, it's a very uh, it's a gratitude and uh, warm pleasure to invite each one of you to this Innovation Club session on the topic from, uh, on the topic gender equality and unfinished tasks. Before uh, Ma'am has already introduced the resource person, so I would just like to highlight a brief historical perspective about the Innovation Club activities at IGNO Regional Centre Kuchin. Uh, in fact, the Innovation Club at uh, Regional Centre Kuchin was initiated under the encouragement of the National Centre for Innovation in Distance Education, which is at IGNO headquarter Delhi. And the National Center for Innovations in Distance Education was established in December 2005. And it is a facility for promoting, supporting, re-engineering and disseminating innovations in open and distance learning. Uh, in fact, under Regional Center Coaching, a, re a series of monthly lectures identified as open session from enrichment sessions have been held since September 2018. And the sessions are usually held with an objective to enrich and generate awareness amongst the learners of IGNO on a wide range of topics ranging from time management, career management, e-support services of IGNO, entrepreneurial opportunities available, innovations in ICT interventions, uh, life skills for a certain successful living, and uh, unleashing the power of effective communication, and even life enhancement skills for enriching a student life. And the last session which we had held was on my startup journey. So, in fact, this is also a platform for the students to resolve their grievances with respect to the subject the student is pursuing it to know. So, this lecture is specifically being held as a part of the International Women's Day celebrations. As we all know, International Women's Day is being celebrated on March 8th every year. And uh, in fact, on this International Women's Day, uh, we may unite to transform our challenges into opportunities and shape for a, and uh, hope for a better future for all. So with these words, I would request our distinguished speaker for today's session to kindly uh, speak about this topic. We warmly welcome you ma'am to the session. Over to you ma'am. Thank you. Uh, thanks so much. Thank you, Prasita. And uh, thanks so much, Dorothy. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to be with you all today to celebrate uh, Women's Day. In fact, uh, about two, three days back when Dorothy got, got in touch with me, 
and asked me to speak on uh, International Women's Day, there were about three to four uh, 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 factors or reasons, you know, which came to my mind. The first one was this, that whenever Dorothy asks me to do anything, I do not refuse. I cannot refuse. Okay. <laughs> so the coming comes Igno or is connected with Igno in one way or the other. One uh, realizes that an in, in an inclusive organization like this, and I've been kind of watching it through the years, you know, because I've been around for a very long time, uh, women wearing different hats, coming from diverse backgrounds, bringing to the table their knowledge, their skills, fresh perspectives, innovative ideas, empathy, mentorship, leadership. And, uh, you know, their contribution to the organization is tremendous and so inspiring. At the same time, one also learns uh, that, you know, women, women do not limit themselves. They might be performing different roles, but their potential and uh, the will to contribute uh, is just tremendous. It goes on and on. So that has been one very important factor to for me to look at uh, uh, women, you know, uh, as professionals and also to look at gender equality and in a way also to think that how important, how significant it is at the same time also uh, to kind of, you know, be prepared to challenge some of the biases that are there with regard to women, some of the stereotypes which prevail as far as women are concerned. So uh, these two, uh, uh, this reason being very important. The third reason is this, that uh, when one thinks about the progress of the country like India, uh, you cannot think about India progressing unless and until nearly 50% of its population or half of its population, which is women and girls, till they progress. Uh, unless there is an equality, you know, one half, might be better off but unless the other half also progresses is also on an equal footing we cannot imagine india as a country progressing you know so that that is an important reason as well i think for all of us to keep in mind uh, another reason you know which uh, also i think is important is the fact that equality is a fundamental human right okay it is a human right which, for which countries have fought, nations have fought. And these equalities have come to us after a lot of struggle. So when we are talking about women's equality, we are actually only extending that right to women as well. You know, uh, We know that human beings, irrespective of their background, of their gender, of their color, of their class, and so on and so forth, have to have equal rights. So women automatically come without questioning, actually. Uh, so, But then we know that there are still a lot of questions and so on. So on this auspicious day, while we are celebrating a lot of developments which have taken place as far as women are concerned, and when I talk about women, please, I want you all to remember that I'm not talking about women in isolation. I'm also talking about men and women together because a lot of the things which have happened, a lot of the things which we see as we do today have come because of the contributions of women and men. You know, So this has to be the underlying narrative as far as the Women's Day or as far as gender equality is concerned. So uh, basically the point is this, that, uh, you know, when... Uh, 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 when we are celebrating uh, 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 Women's Day, why is it that we are also talking about unfinished tasks? Why is it that I choose to talk about unfinished agenda or tasks? Because even though we've come a long way from where we used to be earlier, as you all remember, even suffrage, which means women did not even have the right to vote. And this was happening in Europe. It was happening in countries like America and so on and so forth. Okay, 
the universal suffrage came much later to women they were excluded uh, initially it was just restricted to certain men protestants white ma male and so on and so forth in america later on even in countries in europe it was not that automatically uh, women were given the right to vote okay those days are thankfully far 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 behind okay uh, but now today when we are celebrating we also must remember and we must remind ourselves that the struggle is not over that we still have a long way to go so while i'm celebrating with all of you the fact that now when we uh, see you know where women are we we find that uh, their participation has improved in many many ways you know they are going to school much more we find probably even two decades back the case was you know we find that there are many more in universities we we find even in universities many are opting for subjects like science and technology and so on and so forth similarly we find that uh, mortality rates have come down longevity and women lives have undergone a change you know they live longer they are getting better jobs okay at the same time they are also getting legal rights and protections but let us not forget that we still have a long long way to go uh, so also therefore um, a women's day will constitute of celebrations but it will also constitute of the fact that we need to still cover a lot of ground there is a lot of uh, things to be accomplished and at the same time it reminds us of what path has to be taken how do we go from here forward you know so three things together as far as women's day celebrations are concerned you know this i think is important to all of us who would kind of you know who have a much deeper understanding of the women's role a deeper understanding of gender equality and so on and so forth so let me come to my presentation now uh i have talked about the unfinished tasks or i have also talked about or nay and i have also talked about the unfinished agenda but i do not have a presentation on unfinished agenda as such so how is it that what is the structure of my presentation how am i going to come to this point what i have done is that uh, i have divided my presentation in four parts the first part we very uh, hurriedly will go through the causes of gender equality as they persist as they exist today also uh, the second thing is that uh, as per international uh, reports um, there are uh, specific very credible uh, uh, institutions which do gender audit which uh, uh, see the status of women along certain parameters we try to see where india stands today despite the fact that we've achieved a lot and this is something i've been saying right from the beginning i'm not going to repeat this is an underlying um, a kind of a, 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 a strand you know which will be there always the third thing is that i will be highlighting two very important issues uh, which confront uh, uh, gender equality and which we need to address so that women do not fall again into that trap of inequality so two important uh, things i will highlight and then finally i'll talk about the way forward while i'm doing all of this um, uh, i would uh, expect that you will appreciate that unfinished tasks will be evident not so uh, advertently but you will be while you analyze when you while you think like when you think a little more deeply about the way i move along in the presentation i am sure the unfinished agenda will present itself in front of you okay so just give me a minute and i'll come to the powerpoint presentation and uh, quickly only we will uh, uh, do this kind of a uh, walking through of a certain things you know which i have put here
is it uh, can you see the powerpoint uh, here is it visible no ma'am no ma'am no ma'am no, ma yes, now yes ma'am you have to give me a minute i am a bit technologically challenged so just uh, kindly uh, bear with me it's not coming right it's is it now visible yes ma'am yes 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 it is visible all right all right okay so very quickly we'll go through this many of you might be even find it or you know finding it quite repetitive but nevertheless i think it's important to recall you know because we moved on uh, beyond certain things which still are important and which we still need to consider first obviously is the uh, poverty uh, factor of poverty because that restricts women's access to education healthcare and economic opportunities so it kind of you know because women are not also getting educated it is the same thing unless they elevate their economic status it is running through the uh, generations the second thing still important i mean it's sometimes very unbelievable to think that child marriage poverty are still very important issues even in our own context the estimates are there you can just have a look at your uh, screen to see you know that unicef says that how many uh, million girls are married before the age of 18 and same is the case situation in our country as well now important thing is structural inequality this is a reason but it is also conceptually very important to understand what we mean by structural in inequality it is not something which is very evident however it is embedded in our institutions and in our organizations whether they are government or they are private or societal networks you know uh the 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 fact that a male uh, uh, masculine uh, uh, male uh, child or uh, males are considered more important than women you know there is a division also along uh, a gender uh, the ro the distribution of roles whether in the homes or outside is also along the genders and uh, the, the, these are actually culturally uh, embedded uh they are uh, economically of beliefs and uh, identity based biases these are all there you may not be able to see them very overtly but they manifest themselves in institutions like family similarly also in government institutions like a workplace and so on and so forth various beliefs which one will come to uh, later on but structural inequality as a concept explains a lot of no uh, myths stereotypes and importance which is given to a particular gender over the other you know so i want you to remember that this is something which is very hard to shake which is not evident but hard to eliminate because it 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 means there's an accumulation of uh, many generations you know traditions cultures and so on and so forth patriarchy again is something which is at the basis of a uh, Uh, gender inequality we we know that it is the superiority of the males here and this means basically that girls uh, 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 being given education medical facilities or 
being inducted into jobs and so on and so forth. There's something which is resisted because of the prevalent patriarchal beliefs and systems, value systems. Uh, lack of education, still. India has made considerable strides, I must say, especially after the right to education, at least in the school si sector, we find that there, there are a lot more girls. I think the ratio between girls and uh, um, uh, uh, boys in the school sector probably is now not so skewed. And it's not probable. It's in fact, uh, it's a fact, uh, actually. But at the same time, I think we also need to remember that as we move into the secondary level of education, it's like an inverted pyramid, you know, the primary has the maximum move to the secondary, move to the higher secondary or and all. We find that girls numbers are dwindling. Similarly, in university, in colleges, the same thing happens. Uh, then again, we can uh, actually study how it happens across the disciplines in uh, engineering and technology. In fact, in STEM subjects, you know, uh, how is it there? What about the disciplines which are considered to be more uh, women friendly, more gender gender friendly, uh, you know, like home science and so on and so forth. So this again becomes a very interesting case study. And we do find that there are still uh, there is still a need of empowerment uh, because, you know, there are gaps, gender gaps still exist here. Then medical health is an important thing. We know that wherever there are inadequate uh, uh, healthcare facilities, girls face the brunt of uh, having higher mortality rates. There is They do not have access to plan family planning and there are many other issues related to their health, which persist because of poor medical health. And one can also add over here, you look at the way privatization is happening in, uh, in the health sector. This obviously is going to also widen the gender gap, especially at the uh, level of where there are low income families, migratory labor, and so on and so forth, you know. So, uh, okay. Now we come to uh, something that I had mentioned before, and this is about the GGGR. What is GGR? It is the Global Gender Gap Report. This is a report which is brought out by the World Economic Forum and it does uh, its analysis and status of the health of gender equality on the basis of four parameters. The first one is economic participation. The second is educational attainment. The third is health and survival. And the fourth is political empowerment. These are the four counts. In fact, if you recall, uh, there is also this you know, human development report, uh, which is now the basis of determining the development uh, stage of a country, which also has qualitative indicators. You know, In a similar fashion, the global uh, gender gap report also premises itself on these four parameters, which I have talked about. Here, out of 146 countries in the, in the year 2023, which is just about last year, we find that India is now placed at 127th rank, you know. And in 22, India was 135th rank. No doubt there is an, an improvement from 135th. We have come down to 127th, but still a long way to go. Uh, let's have a look at the neighbors, you know, how they are doing. Pakistan is still at 142. Bangladesh is 59. And I think that's pretty credible. China, 107. Nepal, 116. Sri Lanka is at 115. And Bhutan, 103. So if we have a look at our neighbors, I think uh, we really need a lot of uh, inputs to improve our ranking. And uh, the neighbors, uh, placed as they are, kind of, you know, put the mirror back to us and tell us that we have to still achieve a lot. Acha, let's come to the first point here, uh, which I was talking about education, you know, educational attainment. So uh, that is the first point. Four things which I've said that GGR takes. Let's take the parity in education. It has, India has achieved parity in 
enrollment across all levels of education, something which I also mentioned. But the fine print or the fine tuning still remains to be seen as far as the higher education and different subjects are concerned. Okay. Economic participation and opportunity, only 36.7 gender parity is achieved in this domain. Again, if you see economic participation, jobs, uh, wages, and uh, other opportunities, we are at 36.7. And whereas there is an uptick in parity, and wages have gone up for women but there is also something which is being flagged as a red flag which is this that there is a slight drop in the representation of women in senior positions and technical roles wherein you know which is surprising because i think a lot of organizations are widening inclusive uh, domains and ecosystem as far as women's adjustment is concerned but still, women do not find themselves, uh, 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 you know, uh, comfortable, uh, despite the fact that wages have increased and so on and so forth. So this is one red flag that one needs to really look into. Political empowerment now, 25.3% uh, parity. You're all aware, last year we've done the, uh, you know, women's representation bill, uh, which uh, seeks to guarantee 33% uh, a reservation to women at the parliament and also in the uh, state assembly and so on and so forth. Uh, at the moment, women represent 15.1% of parliamentarians. So uh, here again, a mixed picture. Let's look at other countries. Bolivia has 50.4%, India 44.4%, France 423 And this we are talking about when we talk about local governance which is the panchayati raj systems and now finally i come to the last parameter over here and which is health and survival there is a 1.9 percent improvement in india's sex ratio at birth okay so that means the women uh, mortality at birth has come down uh, girls mortality and uh, this has been over a, a long long time uh, there are still countries like Vietnam, Azerbaijan and all which are still skewed in terms of sex ratios. Uh, so what, what actually happens, you know, what is happening when we are talking about these four, four parameters which the report has taken into account. The manifestation of all this is, comes down to all what I have listed out here. There are wide gaps and in male and female employment and labor force participation rates. There are pay gaps. There are disparities in educational attainments. There is unequal access to formal finance. The gender digital divide is likely to remain or become wider. Uh, prevalence of gender-based violence. Again, you know, an important factor that is also a manifestation when gender equality is there we find all this inadequate social protection and insufficient attention to the care economy i'll come to the care economy a little later and uh, also to some of these factors we'll discuss in details later on but let me also say that i'm quite aware that i'm addressing an audience in kerala whereas you know that some of the things have really brought in dividends, you know, as far as gender equality is concerned. Uh, uh, women's health, women's education uh, are some things which are laudable. The country has to learn. Also, the skewed uh, ratio, The I think the, the, the women are much more as compared to the sex ratio here. Uh, you know, there are 1,000 plus uh, if I remember correctly. So these are lessons to be learned from Kerala and uh, people in Kerala do realize the importance and the dividends which uh, gender equality has brought to them so far. At the same time, I'm also aware that there are still certain things in Kerala itself which need to be highlighted. And these have been shared in the government reports on government websites. I'll talk uh, two more specifically over here. One is about the economic participation of women, you know, in the different types of jobs and so on and so forth. The second thing is about the political participation. And this is despite the fact that in Kerala, the Panchayati Raj system is pretty much robust, probably more robust as compared to the 
other states in the country and decision making in vital issues at the grassroots women participate more at the same time there is much more which needs to be done and at the same time as far as uh, you know other things concerning gender are concerned uh, kerala still has to focus on those issues maybe we can take them up later on when we proceed you know uh, for a discussion okay let me now come to this when we are talking about gender inclusion apart from the fact that gender is a inherent uh, human equality is a inherent human right it's at the it's at the basis of democracy right this is an important factor which we cannot uh, uh, you know overlook but what are the other things which are so important that policy makers also are talking about gender inclusion why should we include gender what is it that they bring to the table how does the economy prosper what are the various uh, benefits and advantages quickly let's run through this one that uh, gender inclusion through various studies has uh, highlighted to the fact that there is a higher economic growth greater economic and financial resilience and income inequalities come down when women participate in the economic activities the second thing is very important thing also when cash transfers are directly made to women you know as form of incomes it has been seen that this benefit is translated into spending on the food and education of children which does not happen so much as much when males are the uh, uh, income holders you know when they spend and so on so women bring in much more uh, for the children uh, through cash transfers or through their own uh, wages and so on and so forth or wherever they have been given this responsibility uh, thirdly in the panchayati raj participation of women it has been found that uh, when women have uh, decision making as far as the uh, uh, local issues like water and sanitation is concerned which matter much more to women uh, the provision it has been they have been provided for much more judiciously and uh, the uh, women because of their participation day to day participation in such like issues the the the, the rationalization uh, is much more you know the decision making is much more sound it is it is much more uh, 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 it is much better you know that is what the studies have pointed out okay uh, now uh, let me uh, just uh, you know bring this and uh, get on with certain things that i will want to uh, tell me something can you see me or no am i visible no yes ma'am you visible to us uh, but uh, your uh, presentation is also showing us all Please right also. so i may have to just go back to the presentation you know uh, okay now let me uh, i have actually covered a lot and uh, i have talked about the causes i have talked about how the various gender reports and all what are the when even assessed on different parameters how does gender equality fare up you know as far as india is concerned uh, uh, at the same time like i was saying in the adequacies and the tasks or unfinished agendas also become visible when we take into account this uh, discussion two things very quickly which i want to uh, point out in front of you is one is this ki a uh, lot of gender stereotypes and biases are present in society i said part of the structural inequality which i had mentioned earlier now the point is what do we mean by these biases giving you an example the fact that you know when we talk about women cannot be logical they are very emotional they cannot take sound decisions these are the kind of biases that one is talking about supreme court recently has come out with a handbook in which it states that uh, irrationality or unsound decisions are not attributable to one gender it's not the female gender you know so the handbook on in supreme court recently which has been brought out also is taking cognizance of the fact 
that slowly but steadily we need to fight these kind of biases which are prevalent even in organizations and which are a major impediment you know as far as uh, women's equality is concerned uh, that is one thing which i wanted to point out uh, the other thing uh, which i point uh, which i want to talk about you know is that after having discussed that why is gender inclusion important we have pointed out to various dimensions of why women are considered important participate party participate only how do you say it participants in economic uh, decisions and so on and so forth okay i will just like to flag two issues which i think are very important and which are very contemporary you know and again i think that we need to do some kind of a scenario building we need to do some kind of a you know when we think about a projection how are things going to be 20 years from now or 10 years or 5 years from now uh, what is the state of women going to be how is the state of society going to be i want you to just imagine and for that i will uh, narrate you know two issues which i think are important and these will have uh, future implications also one is about women and climate change you know uh, basically uh, you would be uh, thinking you know well, what is it that how is it that women uh, are kind of you know in any way going to be influenced by uh, by climate change now the important thing for you all to remember is that women uh, actually share a very intricate and complex and intimate relationship with natural resources if you look at the women from the rural areas the semi rural areas and so on and so forth okay one minute do you want do you want me to address your question now or do you want me to finish first okay maybe we'll take one question at this sorry. moment yes sorry. Sorry. Ma uh, yeah uh, you can uh, complete your session now maybe we can take the questions at the end ma'am in the discussion okay so i have to go till four only right is that not right and i think i'll yeah yeah yes ma yes ma you can continue ma yes okay so i think i should just uh, rush up okay uh so basically what i'm trying to say is this that women really have a very intricate intimate and complex relationship as far as natural resources are concerned look at the rural areas where women go um for uh, firewood for water for fodder ensuring that there is food security for the family and so on now in a landscape where climate change is happening let me take the example of the state of maharashtra you know and you have been reading that year after year in maharashtra there have been droughts water has not been available to women consequently what has happened is that women walk nearly for 12 hours to get water because all these household things are along gendered lines divided you know so return with water interestingly now the social landscape has changed in uh, maharashtra uh, to the extent that you know i mean one has to be aware of these kind of changing uh, changes taking place in a village called dengan mal in western maharashtra what is happening is that men have started uh, marrying twice they have a, a second wife is called the pani bai or the water wife because women could not be away for 12 hours from household chores what they have done is that there has been polygamy in the uh, in particular areas where uh, one woman looks after the children the household chores and so on whereas the other one is dedicated totally to bringing in water so these are the kind of changes in the social fabric which have started taking place you know uh now again the point is that one has to when so much noise is being made about climate change we again find that the voice of the women is completely silent as far as decision making is concerned forums which are talking about climate change do not have women who are bearing the brunt climate change you know think of a woman in a village a girl child who has to cope with 
uh, the the uh, you know the vegetables not uh, being there the crops not being there and so on and so forth the hardship falling on the family because there is only subsistence agriculture so the girl without any education and so on is married off when she gets married the same story gets repeated over there children that are born are also kind of you know plowed back into uh, making livelihoods meet and so on and so forth so this is the kind of scenario which is likely to emerge if we do not take into account the fact that things which immediately impact women's life need to factor in their problems their solutions and so on and so forth this is one thing which i wanted to bring to light because this is i think of utmost importance the other other thing is about the digital divide again you know the way uh, we 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 uh, when we are talking about the jobs we find that many of the upcoming jobs also need internet there are uh, computers and so on and so forth if you look at the distribution and use of internet and mobile phones and all women are still lagging behind you know many surveys including uh, have come up with this that men in uh, urban areas have more women probably have almost similar but when we go to the rural areas and so on we find that these things are not available with women the gender gap then therefore gets accentuated further as far as the uh, the the technology is concerned so uh, two important factors which are imp which are very very important as far as the country's uh, you know internet is coming technology is con uh, coming we are talking about the growth of the country now being hinged to technology at the same time women being left out of there means that the progress in this respect will also be hindered climate change already have talked about and quickly if we can just wind up with the way ahead you know what exactly is that we need to do if we have to move forward a uh, couple of things here you know i should say uh, one is this that i think it is important to have a gender lens in almost all the ministries it's not important that only the ministry of child and women development should look at policies and so on with a gender lens in fact uh, these have to be integrated with ministries like education commerce finance um, telecommunications and so on and so forth because uh, when we want them to participate in development when we want that equality is to be ensured i think taking into account peculiarities of where things do not uh, uh, progress and where they are getting uh, stalled is very important the second thing is this that uh, education health these are uh, traditional things which uh, 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 women's organization which women's movement has talked about right from the beginning uh, the 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 third thing is that more and more economic participation even in rural areas how does that happen that will happen when you give women things like functional foundational literacy and also financial literacy foundational literacy is the ability to read write do mathematics uh, uh, the basic mathematics skills and similarly the financial literacy to go about there uh the, the 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 kind of work that they are involved in they should be helped in that with Uh, awareness about the finances and so on and so forth that is important uh, another thing which is important and has to be kept in mind is the fact that upskilling uh, training retraining on the job training these are important things again that we need to talk about vocational education is coming up uh, in a big way as far as the government initiatives are concerned in fact all of you must be aware that uh, the new education policy is talking about vocational education right from the middle school now you know and uh, one thing again which one wants to highlight here is that vocational education should not be taught in a way that again it falls into along gender lines what do i mean care services or working with human beings uh, should not be a women's domain what are care services 
already women, because of the fact that they look after the household, they look after the children, they do look after the elder, it is taken for granted that providing psychologically, emotional, and development needs is something that a woman has to do. You know, one has to move about uh, away from these roles. Uh, giving more uh, uh, investment for development of care services. Let me give you an example. Our university has a crash running for small children. And women across the board find that extremely useful. And uh, it is very, very productive for them to have that kind of uh, surety that while they are working, the children are no, not too far. They are very close by only. So. Uh, I think I, I probably will uh, 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 stop over here. So let me just kind of, you know, uh, bring it within a framework. What I have tried to do is uh, uh, one uh, kind of, you know, walk through the causes of gender equality and uh, uh, of gender inequality rather. And uh, at the same time to also have pointers towards those various factors uh, which are causes of inequality and to analyze whether they still remain as causes and if not, how far we have to go in order to, uh, 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 you know, do something about that and remove them uh, by way of education, by way of health and so many other things that one has talked about. The second thing which I have done is to talk about India's position from different parameters, four parameters I have talked about. I have also said that there are exceptional states. Kerala is an exception. Tamil Nadu is an exception, and so on and so forth. But by and large, there is still a lot of work which remains to be done as far as gender equality goes. Uh, two important case studies, if one was to look even you know further and in detail, two important uh, issues, contemporary issues uh, that one needs to uh, have an opinion on and uh, analyze seriously. One is women and climate change. And the second is women and technology. And uh, the implications of having women on board uh, in these two, uh, within these two domains, you know, and vice versa of not having them on board, you know. And finally, uh, I think um, one has also talked about the various uh, different uh, measures or uh, uh, routes that one can take as a way forward from here. Uh, so I think I'll uh, stop here and uh, probably it's time to take questions. So I'll be happy to take questions and attempt to answer a few of them. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am, for a very enriching session, I must say. Uh, we now uh, keep the session open for our students or the staff who want to ask any questions to our resource person. Just unmute your mic and please uh, uh, speak, come on the camera, or you can unmute your voice and unmute and your voice and just ask the question to the resource person. Someone raise the hand during the session. So, Adityan, was it you? I think I, uh, if I remember, it was you, right? You want, you had a question? Hello, ma'am. Yeah, hi. Hello. Okay. Uh... The speech was, uh, this presentation was very nice. My question is that, uh, isn't there a uh, possibility that uh, even in the uh, society consisting uh, women, uh, even in the women group itself, uh, there are barriers uh, towards uh, empowerment? within the women itself. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yes, yes. absolutely. You want to uh, add to your uh, point further or should I 
answer this. Actually, I think that's a very important thing that you raised. When I talked about structural inequality, when I talk about patriarchy, it's important to note that a lot of women, women actually are also part of that society. A lot of them internalize those inequalities. A lot of them also feel that patriarchy is the way out, you know, because traditionally men have been looking after the outside things and women are dedicated to household chores. Uh, this is how women themselves feel. Many of the women also believe that to be a good mother, to be a good wife, to be a good householder, you, you need to uh, put things like jobs and all on the side. So women themselves internalize those attitudes and biases which are prevalent in society. Therefore, many of them are hesitant even to come out to take jobs and because they feel that they will be uh, ignoring and they will be, uh, you know, not good in their different roles if they leave their children behind, their ailing parents behind or they do not uh, do a good job as a housewife, as a mother, and so on and so forth. So uh, that's true, actually, because we are also products of the same society. And we do believe that many of the traditions, while they are actually not based on any scientific attitudes, but these are beliefs which have been carried along for a long time. We believe that they are true. We believe there is some merit in them. So that's right. Women themselves because they are products of the same society. Okay. So when we live in a society, we do believe many other things which are there, you know, which are prevalent. Unless and until consciously we start opposing, you know, then it's a different matter. Then the struggles is at another end, you know. Uh, so so that's, that's right. What you're saying is absolutely correct. Thank so you, any other question? what you are saying is correct in fact you know more than the uh, yeah the, the the sustainable development goals the sdgs of which uh, goal number 5 talks about uh, uh, women and gender equal equality you know women and girls equality is something which was to be achieved within the time period you know which had been given but these are being extended the time periods are now uh, getting extended because not many countries have reached those goals. In fact, it's not in only India. You will be surprised that once the deadline has been extended to 2030, I think it has been extended to 20. I'm not very sure. Can't recall right now. But I know for sure that many European countries also are not able to achieve those goals. You know, So the problem of gender inequality is not prevalent in India, though it is the scale is much larger. But at the same time, when we are talking about things like political participation, economic participation, we find that in US, in Europe, situation is the same. If uh, you can recollect, you know, in the United States, standing for a president, standing for a vice president, the women have to go through a lot. Uh, Hillary Clinton's example is there. Now we know Kamala Harris is, is there and many other Indians, you know, who have settled in the U.S. are also contesting. But women do not. They, it's not that it's a smooth walk for them. L political participation in the West, also in India and developing countries, I think it's a very tough nut to crack because empowerment comes through economic participation and political participation. And these are denied. Look at the number of years in our country we took to get the women's bill 
for reservation passed. Look at the way different political parties behaved. The, they would not come together. They, they, there were delaying tactics, you know. So the kind of things, but what is nice about India at least is because of the amendment to the constitution and having Panchayati Raj institutions in place. I think the local self-government is very important. So the voice of the women at that level is very important and it matters a lot. You know, uh, the fact that they are able to talk about their own issues, they are able to contribute, they are able to, uh, uh, you know, bring results is something which I think is very heartening and gives us hope that we will achieve this these things over a period of time and hopefully not too far in the distant future. You know, that is the wish and dream and desire that one has. Thank you, ma'am. Anyone else who would like to ask for a resource question? Kindly raise your hand. Hi, ma'am. Good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon, Shafi. Uh, ma'am, uh, even though the topic was gender equality, the only thing we were speaking was about the women empowerment. There was not even a single point uh, which is saying about the men, the problems of the men they are facing in the society, they are facing in the families, they are facing financially. Not even one point was uh, described uh, about men. So can you please uh, put in uh, put this statement into this topic also, please? <laughs> All right. So uh, let me tell you one thing. I think basically it is not about a woman versus men. I said right in the beginning that women have been able to achieve a lot because men have been there. It's because of the help that women uh, get from their families, be it their father, brother, husband, sons, whoever, you know, or even people outside the family, that women are able to do much more. And that is a fact which has been recognized by all uh, all women themselves, I mean, women in women's movement do consider men's contribution is very important. See, one is not saying that uh, men do not have problems. I mean, we know men have problems. Men have financial issues. Men also have social issues. Men have issues within the family. The point is here that of the two, who are the better off? We are generally talking about, you know, when we imagine India's population, we know that one half is men and we know the other half is women and girls. But where are women and girls today as far as education, health, finance, political participation and so on and so forth is concerned? They are lagging behind. Why are we talking about gender equality if there is already an equality between men and women? Why are we celebrating Women's Day? Why are we saying that we have come a long way from where women were denied even the right to vote? Women would not go to the educational institutions. Women would not step out of the homes and so on and so forth. They would be relegated to the household world. Today we find people, uh, you know, women coming uh, out. We have examples of our own women from our own country who have been like Kalpana Chavla, for instance, you know, how is it that women are able to reach those heights? It is because of the fact that somewhere along the line, the support has been given by both women and men to women to achieve their uh, goals in life, right? So I, I, I would just say that uh, to view that men and women are different, to view that men's problems are different, and women's problems are different. That's not the right way. I acknowledge men have their own problems. I also acknowledge that men probably are also, uh, not all of them in uh, have, have had access to education. No. But you would agree that in a household, if there are two children, a male child and a, a female child, a male child gets importance. We are talking about that. We are talking about that importance here. 
we are saying give to men give to women equal importance women have the potential women can do as well as the men can do i think the whole debate centers around there why should women be given a second class status as citizens why should they be denied opportunities why should opportunities not be to be made accessible to them i think that's the point i hope i have been able to answer your question shafi but but i actually feel that we need to change our ways of looking at the problem The problem is कि एक इधर एक इधर नहीं दोनों बराबर तराजू तो दोनों बराबर ही रहना पड़ेगा ना दिस लेट मी नाउ एंड विद वन वेरी फेमस कोट ऑफ स्वामी विवेकानंद हु सेड दैट रिमेंबर अ बर्ड कैन कैन नॉट फ्लाई ऑन वन विंग अ बर्ड हैज टू हैव टू विंग्स टू बी एबल टू फ्लाई इफ वी हैव टू प्रोग्रेस वीमेन एंड मेन बोथ हैव टू गो साइड बाय साइड right so it's like the two wheels i'm talking about everything that we talk about pahiye hote na do gaadi ke wahi baat hai barabar hone chahiye ek toota hoga ek uncha hoga usse nahi hoga so i think dorothy should be i the time is up there are no questions coming should be uh, i think it's time probably to wind up anybody else Friends, this recording of the session will also be available in the YouTube channel of the Igno Regional Center for Children. And please subscribe and follow us also in uh, the Instagram and also in the platform X to get the notification. Because after the uh, new normal situation, uh, after the pandemic, we are in touch with the uh, students through the social media. Please be beneficial. And always be watch up uh, the enrichment session with the life skills session also. Life is like a journey, they say. Yes, many a time we get a sense of fit when we see a dead end. But when we go near a dead end, we will see there are multiple ways open up. And it's always told about the story of a god. Uh, Got caught in the net. It uh, was an experiment which they made. That when there it was only uh, very few uh, thread to come out of the leg, it was struggling. And when it twisted, when the one thread was in between the two, so many a time even in our life uh, we tend to quit. But if, when uh, it is time to quit, just think, give one more try. Because it is many a time. The effort which we put shows the little frustration. Maybe uh, thinking of whether we are going in the right direction or how we are going to progress. But still, it's never over until we do. So we still do not give up and have some spiritual inspiration and trust in God to move on with when things get tough, especially in life. And with this small part of uh, life skill education, that is, do not quit, do not worry about tomorrow. When things are very hard, please take one day at a time, one step at a time, and one job at a time, and without worrying about tomorrow. And many a time, you will also realize that one of the uh, tomorrows which we feared has become today, and we are able to handle it. Uh, in a very uh, positive manner. One more, Madam Bina T C is also raising a hand. We will give her opportunity and then wind up the session. Madam Bina, can you please come online? Uh, yes, ma'am. So nowadays, in most of the families, uh, one or two children are there, and I think uh, both the male and female child is getting the uh, equal. opportunities for everything and uh, the parents are uh, giving the same considerations and then for everything for equality for education and all these field and both the male and the female child i am a teacher also so in our classroom so also we are giving
bring the uh, equality. For the girls and the boys together nowadays. So I think uh, Mami, one hear, uh, years you. back, only in remote areas and rural places, uh, uh, this kind of discrimination was there. So nowadays, I think uh, uh, in almost all these uh, field of women, the girls are also coming up. And I yes, ma'am. Yeah. Uh... Hello. Yes, Veena. Yes, yes, I heard yes, your uh, uh, comment. I think uh, you are right to a great extent that uh, where you have two children, a man, a boy and a girl, I think both of them are being given equal opportunities. They are being sent to school, higher education, job and so on and so forth. But I think um, I, I, the new generation also which is coming up there's a lot of division of household labor between a boy and a girl who get married because you know um, women are also now saying that uh, this is something which they will not entirely do and i think to that extent it's okay but uh, you know when i'm thinking, uh, this the uh, the thing is that inequalities may not happen always along education, always along health, always along job and so on. Like I made a point that uh, many a times, you know, uh, they might uh, manifest at a later stage. Like for instance, you know, in the North still, girls are uh, married off probably at an earlier age, you know, even if they are economically independent or, or, or not, this is happening even in middle class educated families once the girl gets married uh, if she has a job and she has got married then you know household thing is uh, looking after the care job like i said is still considered very important and uh, the uh, job with the college or an organization which she is doing is still considered the other thing you know so th her roles are pretty much divided uh, mostly it is done like that. It is still done like that. And we, I mean, in many of our households also, because the belief that woman is the primary caregiver. So it is her responsibility to look after the, the older people at home, smaller children at home, keep the house clean, um, you know, and do other kind of uh, uh, responsibilities with cooking and so on and so forth. So I think they uh, might be equal at some point. I'll be very happy if later on also that same equality uh, works out for them. But there are instances where they are relegated to their roles, which are uh, ascribed roles, meaning as a wife, as a mother, as etc. etc. So. Uh, there also we need to look at inequality. It is not that if a woman has to take leave because somebody is sick at home, it's not men always who will take. No, woman is expected to do that. So that is what I mean. The inequalities manifest in different things, in different ways, in different roles that women perform, which are assigned to her, ascribed to her by society. These are the social roles. These are not natural roles which came. You know. So I hope uh, that's all right as an answer. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Friends, we have come to the end of the session. Will any one of you volunteer to say a word of thanks? This is also uh, a soft skill training, uh, which is a part of this enrichment session. Can I request to be normal? To be familiar because the name is familiar. To start from the back. You will tell the name. I will, we will. We have already typed the name uh, in the message. Madam's name is Poonam Bushim, and the topic is gender equality unfinished task. So you will tell the name of the person and you will say thank you to them and what whether the 
topic was useful or not. Can one of you volunteer, please? Yes, ma'am. The session was very Shami informative, sir. and this relevant topic nowadays when we are facing the children, the adult children, as ma'am said, and most of the families now I think uh, equality is there, but now in between uh, some of the families, as ma'am said, uh, there are some issues are there now also. So, anyways, uh, ma'am's information and this class was very informative, and uh, thank you, ma'am, for uh, your uh, sharing this information to us. So we are hopping this uh, again, this session, this kind of sessions again. So uh, it was very informative and helpful to me as I am a teacher. Uh, so thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Sir. Uh, giving the word of thanks to Madam Poonam Joshi. On behalf of IGNO Regional Centre Kochit, we take this opportunity to thank uh, Madam Poonam Joshi for being with us and speaking on a very relevant topic, uh, that to need of the hour related to the Women's Day. And uh, it gives us small tips of how to move on later. That is what uh, we really liked it in uh, Madam's lecture. And we are really grateful, ma'am, on behalf of uh, all the staff at Igno Regional Center. We place thanks to you. And uh, after uh, this event, we'll be signing off. And uh, please note that the extension of the pro meeting, the admission session for January 2024 has been extended. So whoever missed it so far can be benefited. And most of the courses of IGNU programs are available in this wire portal. So don't miss out to use the, uh, the IGNU programs available in the SWAYAM portal. And when you are taking admission, you have to be clear whether you want to be a ODL learner or an online learner. So both uh, the uh, terminologies are there. And the summer portal is the portal for access to admission. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dorothy, for having me on this forum. And thank you all so much. You were so patient. Uh, and you kind of, you know, sat through the entire you know, presentation. I'm so thankful to all of you. Thank you thank and you, goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much.